Hey everyone, Arnaldo Offman here with Arceus Video Manuals and I want to talk to you guys a little bit about video mapping. This is actually the first time that I'm setting it up with this particular computer so you're going to see me do it everything live. Now the projector that I'm using is actually not a very bright projector uh, comparatively speaking. It's only about 3,000 lumens. It's one of the BenQ short throw models. And it's actually brighter than this, but it dims the display down a bit because I'm doing record with QuickTime. Uh, so I'm actually going to go right now into video mapper mode. And it's going to say that I need to restart Arceus, which is OK. First thing that I want to do is once Arceus restarts, is I want to go ahead and set up my surfaces. Surfaces is just another fancy word for a video screen. I'm going to go ahead and just do last. Just to uh, do the last surfaces that I have, we're going to skip Siphon because I don't have Siphon running right now. I don't have my RSS ticker. I don't have videos. That's fine. Whatever. Okay. Now I'm going to go into my mapper, which is this icon right here. All right. So right now this is basically showing me which is my default where like the video is going to come out of. So we have this highlighted because we want the video to come out of here. We're going to have this unselected because we're not going to use this as a projection surface. This is going to be our main control surface. So we have our default surface here and you can actually see, let's go ahead and uh, load up a source. We're just going to do our test image and then we're going to hit the full screen button. As soon as I do that, it shows my full screen image onto my house as you can see there. And again, we've got a lot of things fighting against us. First, it's not as bright as it should be because we're using QuickTime to record, which dims everything. Plus, I've got this really bright street light outside my house. But it just shows you how far projectors have gotten nowadays. So we're going to go ahead and do a uh, custom surface. Now, we can basically do it as a regular square, or I can edit the grid. Edit the grid allows me to add additional points. So I'm going to go ahead and add control point horizontally, a couple of them horizontally, and a couple of them vertically. And basically, my goal is to shape the screen to fit around the house. So you can actually see this bottom corner here. I'm going to go ahead and just grab that and hit this part of the house. Next, we're going to grab this part and bring it across here. And it's very important that you actually make sure the horizontal points and your vertical points are straight, meaning they match as close as possible to match. We're going to take this down here. We're going to bring on the other side. I'm actually going to do one that paints the entire part of the house or as much as I can. And I'm not going to worry about the garage part. So we're actually going to stop it right on the edge of my garage door. So we have that there. That is my first surface and it's obviously called default surface. Uh, of course I can duplicate it. I can do all sorts of stuff that I need to do with it. And I'm going to rename it. And we're just going to call it whole house. Then we're going to add a second surface. Now I can add a surface that's triangle shape or square shape. We're going to start with the square shape like usual. And this time we're going to project onto the window right here. And this one's going to be a little bit simpler. So I'm just going to go right here. And I'm going to click on Edit Grid. And that's going to allow me to select the individual points to hit the window perfectly. Now, of course, this is also how I aim on my screens. When I have more than multiple screens, I take each head point, you know, attach a cable to a projector and each projector to a video screen. If you have a bright enough projector, you can take two video screens and not attach it with one. And we're going to go ahead and call this window. Super easy. And then, of course, you can, you know, save. This is its own individual one. I'm going to go to an export. And we're just going to call this Arceus House Mapping. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do ones for the columns as well. So again, we're going to grab one more here. And there's a bunch of options that you can do. You have, for example, your copy, copy from sampling. Uh, and I want to go over all those options much later on, just because it's going to be a lot easier that way. Um, there's really a lot that you can do with this. So I am literally going to go ahead and just take this one here and make my first column 
grab the top one here. Perfect one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate that surface. And I'm gonna move it over here. And then again, I'm just gonna modify to fit. So we have it there. So we have our three columns and we have our window and we're good to go there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save that. Again, we're gonna export it. We're gonna call it the Archaeus House Mapping and it's a .vmp file. All right, and we're going to close out of there. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you is because it dims the brightness when I'm recording the video screen, I'm just gonna show you how I map certain things. So I'm gonna go and close out of this bank. I'm gonna go into my bank three, which is a whole new bank. And we're gonna go ahead and add some textures over here. Now this is the master preview. The master preview basically, you know, I can tell it where to come out of or whatnot. But I'm actually gonna go into my output and my output window for each uh, changes for each individual one. And that's why you're seeing the spider, for example, in every single window, right? So the easiest way is it's kind of like on CompuShow where you can take tabs and move it around. So I'm actually gonna kind of do that. So for example, I wanna put my spider on the window. There it is right there, just on the window. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do, for example, here where it says all outputs, you know, I can actually have it come out of all outputs or I can have it go on the columns. Well, if I wanna have it on multiple columns um, and not have to open three of these up, I can go into my edit output and we're gonna make a new one and we're gonna call it columns, all. And we're gonna select the three columns and then we close. So now we go here, we select columns all and there it is on all three of the columns. And I know that one of them is a little bit off, but that's because I covered the column and part of the garage as one. So when I click on this, it's going to pretty much override everything because it's on all outputs. So I'm actually going to choose whole house. Now there's two whole houses, front, that were just regular, and then rear. And basically what I'm going to do is rear is I'm going to have it where it has only certain parts of the house uh, using a couple different blend modes, which I'll cover later on. So for now, I'm just going to do the whole house. I'll just yeah put it right here. And now you'll see that there's a spider there, there's the individual things on the columns. And what you'll see is that the actual surface around, uh, on, the, on the house, for example, see how that fades down? Because the video, it fades in and out because the video loop. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that it selects only a certain part of the segment. So I'm going to go, come on. There we go. Oops. Whatever. I'll just put it right there. And you can, you know, f go through it and make sure that it's on the best part from the very beginning to the end. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off QuickTime so you get an idea of what it looks like. There it goes. Now it's getting significantly brighter. Okay, so I found a much better angle. You can actually see that even though it bleeds past, it doesn't, the image itself doesn't bleed over because I mapped it to fit the house and it took only a few seconds. Now, if you actually pay attention right around here, those lines of the graphic are bent a little bit. And I can do a little bit more uh, correction by fixing the lines. Um, I can do, a, there's a couple modes in there where I can cut the image to fit around the house. Instead of fitting the image around the house, it'll be the other way around. Uh, again, I'll show you some of the benefits about that or whatnot, which you can use, do some really cool stuff with that. Of course, we have the spider on the window, and I'm going to go through a couple different modes just so you can see. Now, again, it's just as simple as what I did with everything else, which, um, let me go out here. Let's go back to bank number one. So for example, if I wanted my 4SO to be on my window, I can do that. It's just there on the window. All right, maybe I want to do some really cool graphics there, but I want it just on the house. I can do just on the house like that. And maybe I want something on the actual projectors or the, not projectors, I'm sorry, the actual columns. So I'm gonna do my columns all or I can close this out and do this over here on the whole house. 
Okay, so a couple of things I want to show you. Of course, you have your mask, and that's kind of what I was talking about, where you can load your own image, and that way you can basically take a photo of the house, put it on top, uh, if I was projecting mapping the house, so whatever surface you choose. But what I want to show you is, I want to show you the crop panel. The crop panel shows you pretty much the exact same video, you know, the full version of that. But basically, the house here was originally cropped out. So let me go ahead and load it the way it was. Hang on one second. Okay, so again, as you can see, pretty much this entire image is scrunched down to here. But what if I wanted to look exactly like it was on here, meaning that I don't want this to be distorted. And it's, it makes more sense if I show you an actual video, but I'm gonna go ahead and do its copy from output. So it's gonna copy the output into from here to here. Watch what happens. So I click that, and now it's the exact same size. So what's happening is it doesn't look distorted. It looks nice and clean. Let me go ahead and show you that on the video wall there. Even though the lines are bent, you'll actually see the red lines are bent, the overall distortion is not there because it's sampled from this part here, as you can see there. And then if I want to reshape it or whatever, I'm able to do that. But another reason that that's kind of handy is, let's go ahead and go on to the spider. Let's focus on the spider right over here. So I have the nice full-size image or again, I can crop it there. and You can actually see on the window how it changes the, where the spider goes. And I know the spider is not exactly on the window, and that's because things got bumped a little bit. But yeah, you get my point. So I'm just gonna go ahead and re-import it how I had. Go back to my house mapping. As soon as I close that, it's automatically going to reforce whatever resolution that I chose. I can close that. I have the spider, and I know the spider doesn't quite fit in there anymore. So again, it's because the projector got bumped. And that's it in a nutshell. I mean, it's one of those that you really want to sit down, practice. And one of the most important things is you want to make sure your projector is fixed, meaning that it's not moved, that you just don't have it on a table taped down. I mean, it's got to be on a good sturdy tripod, stand, trussing, uh, just something that's out of the way of the average person where they can bump into it or anything like that. You know, if you want to do something really cool to have it outside your house for Halloween, obviously you'll want to get some way to make it, you know, keep it from having the elements hit the projector. That's at your own risk, but keep it somewhere where people are not going to bump into it. But that's it. I mean, that's just some basics into mapping. So my name is Ronaldo Offerman. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post up more on it. I'll be playing a little bit more with it and kind of showing you different techniques and ideas. Again, I just touched the very basics of it just to kind of get you started into some mapping and just to give you some creative ideas. So thank you guys so much. Good night and God bless.